Hello friends, this is Sushant and welcome back to the basics of deep learning. Today we are going to talk about multi-layer perceptron also referred to as MLP. So before we jump into the MLP, let's have a quick recap on what we have learned in our previous tutorial of artificial perceptron. This will help us to get a better understanding of multi-layer perceptron and relevant concepts. So let's get started. We have seen that a perceptron is a basic building block of neural network which receives inputs, processes it and gives an output. It is a clear replica of a biological neuron in our brain cells and work on the same principle. To get more details you may need to watch my previous video on biological neuron versus artificial perceptron. I have provided a link in description. So as said earlier, a perceptron also known as a linear binary classifier. You may ask, what does that mean? So let's understand it by an example. We have a data set as shown here with few red and blue data points we use a line to separate blue points from red points. This shows that just by adding a straight line between the red and blue points, we are able to classify them into two categories. This is called as a linear separation. And the term binary is used as it classifies the data into two categories. For example, 0 or 1. Or for this particular example, a red point or not a red point. But in real world scenario, this is not the case. The real world data is much more complicated and mostly not linearly separable. Let's look at another example of data points. Now look at this data set. Here we cannot separate the data points linearly, or we can say that a single line cannot separate all the red and blue data points. We may require more than one line, just like this, or a non-linear boundary may be a curve to separate these points, just like this curve. But now the question is, how can we get this non-linear boundary for better classification? To achieve this, we must look back and remember what we have learned in our previous video. We have seen that the brain is composed of millions of neurons and each neuron as connected to one another receives a signal from previous neurons, processes it and sends it to the next neuron. Here a single neuron by itself does nothing. It is the group or network of neurons work together to generate the desired output. If you take a real life example of a honey bee, you may have noticed that a bee by itself cannot do anything. But it is the cluster of bees who builds the beehive. Hence, in case of artificial perceptron, we need to create a network of neurons to get the desired output. This network is usually referred to as multilayer perceptron, where each neuron is denoted as node. So let's have a look at a multilayer perceptron. A multilayer perceptron is consist of n number of input nodes referred to as the input layer, x number of hidden layers with each hidden layer made up of certain number of processing nodes. So these are the hidden layers and an output layer consists of one or more output nodes. This network is fully connected network where each node in the previous layer is connected to each node in the next layer. Inputs are processed at each node and then pass to the next node until it generates 
an output. This process is called as feed forward or sometime forward propagation or forward pass. You may hear these different names for the same process. After generating the output, we calculate an error by taking the difference between output value and actual value. This error is then sent back to the each node and its corresponding weight for adjusting the weight value to reduce the error further. This process is called as back propagation using gradient descent. The feed forward and back propagation process continues for several times, which also known as iterations, until we get minimal error on the output. This process is called training process and help us to create a model that makes an accurate prediction on unknown data. We will discuss forward pass, back propagation and gradient descent in more details in my upcoming videos. Hence right now you don't need to get confused with these terminologies. As we will proceed ahead you will slowly get acquainted with it. Now before we will end this tutorial, I would like to highlight some key points which need your attention for future reference. The key points are, first, the number of input nodes is dependent on the number of features available in your data set. Don't forget that all input nodes represent one single row or observation of your data sets. So that we need to keep in our mind. Second, below are some of the parameters that we need to preset and fine tune in neural network during the training phase to reduce the error. So first is number of hidden layers that we need to decide while training the neural network. Number of nodes within a particular hidden layer. Number of iterations. To be used during the training phase and the activation function to be used at the hidden and output layer. These parameters are also called as hyperparameters. So this is it. We have reached to the end of this tutorial on multilayer perceptron. In case of any further question, please post your comments. And once again, thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.